I'm, uh, I'm Jan Lelis, and I'm here to uh, tell you about like funny Unicode characters you should know about as a programmer. And also, I'm uh, writing this uh, Ruby blog where I uh, talk about funny things in Ruby, which you uh, maybe know or can check out. So, the first character I'm uh, t uh, telling you about is this one. Has anyone an idea what it could be or could mean? So, it's it's one character, even though it's made out of three different strokes, and that's the thing. So it's a Thai character, and it's com combined out of multiple sub-characters. And to understand this, we have to understand what Unicode is about. So on their website, they say Unicode provides a unique number for every character. And this means it's not about the encoding, like how the actual bytes look, but it's about uh, what which character is, uh, has which number to refer to them all at once, not by changing the encoding, but to have one unique encoding that uh, provides a number for every character. So uh, it's, this is just a screenshot of Wikipedia, which is like the page where I can select all the encodings that, uh, that are not Unicode. And Unicode doesn't replace every, every of them, but a lot of them. So often when we're talking about characters, what we are actually saying is code points. And code points is this unique number which every code point in Unicode got. So a character can also be made out of multiple code points. And this is what we've seen at the beginning. And it's officially called a graphene cluster, like the user perceived character. And And uh, in Ruby, we are in luck to that we can work with uh, those uh, with those characters because there's the backslash x syntax. Um, and this, oh, can you read it? Thumbs up, thumbs down. Can you can can you read it? Mm. Can, can, can we change the contrast, maybe? Maybe if I, ah, no, it's better. Yeah, better. <laughs> all right, so, yeah, in the first example, which is what we probably all learned, that we can use the dot operator in regular expressions to match for any character. It actually matches for any code point. So, um, so the second version is what we want to use in most of the cases, because it leaves this unit as one unit, as one character. And because it's so important, in Ruby 2.5, we are getting uh, each graphene cluster and a graphene clusters method, which will uh, return the same for us. All right. OK, so I'm not doing this on my laptop, but, by, but on a different machine. This is why this uh, looks not the way it should. But this illustrates a good point also. Like, the second character, it, it's an A with two dots above. And it's, it's a character which is really common in the German language. So I have it on my keyboard. But when I press this button, it won't output like the combined cliff that we've seen. Again, it's again combined out of two code points, but it won't create a single code point unit which represents the same character. So, how can we work with this? I mean, in the, in the first example, oh, you, it's uh, not easily visible, but what you can uh, see is that in the first example, which is the combined cliff, um, it's made out of two code points and the lower one is uh, just a single code point, which is a different code point, which represents the same character. And uh, I'm using the Uniswipe tool here, which, uh, which uh, helps with analyzing code point data. So, but what if we don't care about this different uh, presentations, representations that uh, the characters can have? And this is where uh, an algorithm called normalization comes into play. And 
this will transform the two code point, co two code point version into a single code point version. And it's included in the Ruby standard library since Ruby 2.3. It's even automatically required, which is unusual for this standard library. It's like three standard libraries or so, and this one is. And you can use it by just calling string.unicode.normalize. And as you can see here, the, the first one is the, is the um, double code point one, and the second one is single code point one, and when they are normalized, they are the same character. So this is my third character. It's the letter, Latin small character O. And you might think, what's so special about the letter O? And actually, the special thing is, it's not the letter O. It's a different letter. It's 0BF, 03BF. And this is the Greek small letter O. And how can this happen? The thing is, yeah, this is the real letter O. Want to see the difference? Well, not the real one, the Latin one, which we are more used to. And if we look at it again, we see we see that uh, it's it's a similar uh, character. Yeah, and letter O is a record holder. It has like 75 characters that look really, really similar. And the Unicode Consortium they have a list where they uh, where you can look up those characters. Some more examples. There's a character two question marks, a code point, which means two question marks. And of course, it's easily confusable with a single, uh, uh, with two single letters question mark. Also, you don't have to go to higher Unicode ranges. You can start with ASCII. Uh, the, the letter L, lowercase l, and, uh, and the number one, they're also pretty confusable. So it's, it's a problem that won't be ever totally solved. It's, uh, it's always a visual thing also. And I, I put the two C's here, which, sh which look totally the same because the Cyrillic C and the Latin C, they are the same character. So it, it's, it's by purpose that they are looking identical, but it's different code points. This can lead to uh, all kinds of security issues. Spotify had a good write-up on one. And what do we do now that we know there's, uh, there are confusable characters? And I'd say uh, you can use uh, this tiny micro gem. It's called Unicode Confusable. And there, uh, it uses the, an algorithm provided by, uh, by the Unicode Consortium to, um, to check if two strings are confusable. All right. So this character looks a little like uh, like an I, but actually it's an it's a it's a capitalized I with which which has another dot on above. And why do we? I mean, my first impression is why why do I need an extra extra dot above? So the thing is, we think that the correct uh, correct out outcome of of a upcasing operation. An eye letter is just uh, just a stroke without without a dot. But what about like Turkic languages, like Turkish? They they put a, another dot above. So the upcasing operation or downcasing is a language dependent operation, and you need the context of the of the language to do it correctly. So when we when we're in Ruby. We, we have the upcase method. And before Ruby 2.4, it wasn't Unicode aware at all. So again, the letter A, like A with two dots, it won't upcase at all. Since Ruby 2.4, however, we can properly upcase it. And what we can even, uh, we can also get the old behavior by passing in the ASCII key as a parameter. And we can even uh, put in some local info information, for example, Turkic, to get uh, 
the correct eye that we want. Uh, upcase is not the only uh, method that supports this addition argument. You can also pass it to swap case or capitalize. Um, also, this is pretty good that this made it into uh, into Ruby. Um, be, be aware that there's another method of downcasing a string. It's called case folding. It's also supported as a fourth argument if you just um, if you just uh, use the fold use fold as uh, the keyword, and but it uses a different algorithm. So in this example, uh, it's the German sharp letter. It's the German letter sharp s. And if we are using the normal downcasing, it will return the lowercase version of it. But if we are using the case folding mechanism, which is meant for comparing strings, we get another representation of this letter, which is in this case just a 2s. There's more to be careful about. So I've told you the Lithuanian option uh, is possible to, to pass in, into downcase and upcase, but it, it's possible to pass it in, but it's not working yet. So don't do this yet. Also, we don't have covered the whole world. For example, uh, in the Netherlands, uh, they have a really uh, interesting way to, 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 to uppercase island, and no option to do this in Ruby. And also, there's uh, the string case compare methods. And they look really, really similar, but um, the case compare question mark one it uses the case folding that I just told you about, and the other one, it will only use plain ASCII. So be careful there. OK, now for some fun, more fun characters. It's a, this is a control character called next line, or sometimes called new line. And I don't know how, do you, how you do new lines, but, uh, but they're plenty of ways already, depending on your operating system. So normally, you would uh, use uh, maybe just a line feed character or the character return character, or a combination of both. But, uh, but because of this confusion, uh, there was another character introduced to, to, to give you a line break, which is called next line. But it wasn't uh, it, it wasn't so successful because adoption was not so good. And however, on on my machine at least, it, it works. If I just print it out, it will give me uh, another. It, it will give me a line break. But check on the systems you are. Um, yeah, or don't use this character. I mean, no one no one does. It's, but you should know that it exists. And if you're checking for line breaks. You should know this could be an option to, to have a line break. Um, the next line character is interesting also for another reason, um, where, which is not visible. But uh, this is an ASCII table. And uh, in, the, in the, the first two rows, which means like the first 32 characters, they are, uh, they are special characters called control characters um, uh, because they, they don't render uh, normal cliff, but they are like uh, doing line breaks or similar stuff, and they were like introduced when ASCII was introduced. But um, it's not only the first 32 characters. So later, people wanted to have more like control, uh, control, oper wanted to do more uh, stuff and needed more control characters. So they introduced uh, some more. Um, Control characters. Ah, I'll show you this next page, which is better readable. So, uh, the original set of control characters is called C C C zero, and uh, the new one is called C one, and it's not supported anyway. Unicode uses uh, them because it's uh, compatible with them, but they ex essentially do do nothing except for the next line operator that I've shown you. They don't do anything. So, if you meet them in in your data that you are parsing, be very careful about them. What what their uh, purpose is. So, how can we work with this in Ruby? The next line operator it's uh, it's it's not matched by 
uh, the normal um, regular expression which matches for spaces, but by this one using the Unicode property syntax. And also uh, control characters can also be matched with uh, the CC uh, as your property. And you could also use uh, the characteristics gem for further research if it's C0 or C1. So next section, this character is uh, really wide. So it's the 3em dash. And, and the thing is, if you are using it, um, there's a chance that you might break software. So, for example, if, I, if, I, if I'm using it on, on the terminal, uh, you can see that the cursor is somehow misplaced and that it's not detected that it's so long. Also, if you change your name on Twitter, uh, you cannot see it, but it totally breaks the layout. Maybe you can see it in the next. Uh, I wanted to change it back, but it wasn't possible because my changing back section was also gone. And it's not the only character, there are some more which are also like, they totally look different on my machine because it's also, it's also really dependent on, on the platform you are on, how it is represented. So you, uh, here it says not well defined, but it's more like it's not defined at all, which is uh, uh, of course confusing for fixed width environments like the terminal is. And it's especially true for uh, a lot of Asian characters. So the Unicode consortium uh, started to assign some widths, if it's like one terminal space or two terminal space, to a lot of Asian characters. But even there, there's a category of, of, of characters which is called ambiguous, and they can be either single or double. So the user of the software or the library author has to put in an option to, to to, to, to display them as one or two digits, terminal spaces. So you can use the Unicode display with microgem if you want to have uh, proper checks. And the first character you see, um, it's, uh, it's a normal, it's, it's a character which is only like one space and the second is two spaces. But uh, the third one is one of these ambiguous characters, this dot. So you have to pass in actually the option if you want to have it displayed as one or two uh, spaces. All right. Now that we know about uh, no, know about uh, this, let's go to this character, which is just a placeholder for 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 an invalid character that is uh, forbidden. To use. So there are two kinds of, of code points that are not allowed in, in Unicode and they are encoding related. So as I've said, Unicode itself is independent from the actual encoding, but there are like three popular encodings, UTF-8, UTF-16 and UTF-32 and you can use them, in, uh, um, you can uh, use whatever encoding you, you want to and the UTF-16 encoding is uh, needs a special area of code points to, to, to be functional. So this section of D800 till DFFF, it's, it's blocked because, uh, because UTF-16 needs it to represent uh, more Unicode characters. And you could, but the, the thing is, in UTF-8 and UTF-32, you can actually uh, have this uh, code point value encoded, but it's just not allowed. The second, uh, the second version of invalid code points is uh, two large ones, which is again related to UTF-16. So the 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 highest code point you rep can represent with UTF-16 is uh, 10FFFF, which is about one million, and you could represent much higher code points with uh, the different encodings, but uh, the Unicode consortium said. No, uh, this is the upper limit. Um, I will read it out to you. So um, this is just uh, 
an example that, so in UTF-16, normally they had two bytes used to uh, represent one character, and if it goes to four bytes, it needs, it needs those special zero gate uh, code points. So because they are not allowed, Ruby will uh, forbid you to create them with uh, the um, with the in, in within uh, string literals and issue a warning. But uh, Ruby wouldn't be Ruby if if you really need them. Um, you can use uh, different techniques to to create uh, such data. And uh, Ruby also gives you some some. Uh, methods that you can use to work with uh, with uh, strings and encodings and and one of them is the valid encoding method and if your data contains those forbidden code points uh, this method will uh, return false and also um, you have the scrub method on strings which will replace all of these uh, characters with this with this uh, replacement character that you've seen at the beginning Um, besides all these illegal characters, you can. You, there's also a section of, uh, of of characters which are legal, which are allowed to um, represent, but which are not assigned to anything. For example, the the the, the uh, ten ffff, which is the highest code point available in the whole standard, it's not assigned uh, to anything, and it will never be assigned to to anything because. Um, because three kinds of code points are not will not ever be assigned to anything, and one uh, of this is called with a not so good name uh, non characters. So there are sixty six characters in the Unicode consortium which are not assigned and just will, will never be assigned. There's also a huge section of private use code points where you can encode like fantasy languages or uh, or uh, Logos of your rating systems. Yeah. Okay. You you cannot see any, but uh, like the the um, lower one F eight F F is the Apple Apple logo. So on Apple computers, it will be it will display as an Apple, and the the above one is is the Ubuntu logo. So on Ubuntu machines, you will see the Ubuntu logo there, but they are not defined by the consortium, so you can uh, so they they won't be displayed displayed correctly on different platforms. And then there's also a huge portion of code points which hasn't been assigned yet, which is called reserved. Let's see if this graph works. No, it doesn't. So, but what it shows is that uh, it's it's a lot of reserved code points. So it's uh, almost all of the million code points are not uh, assigned yet. So there's plenty of space for future future assignments. The private and there are about as much uh, standardized code points as there are private use code points. So back to how we can work with them in Ruby. Um, again, using this uh, property uh, Unicode property syntax and regular expressions, you can match for non-characters. Um, it's a, bit, a little bit cumbersome. You Really have to write code point there. Um, you can uh, match private use code points with private use and the reserved ones. If you don't care about the non characters, you can just use uh, the unassigned property. And if you do care, you have to do this uh, negative look ahead, positive look back thingy in, in the regular expression to make it work. Okay, so in in uh, in this section, it's not about the the brackets. It's about the space in between, which look like a usual space, white space, but uh, it's not the usual white space. It's the no break space. Um, but again, you have no way to see it's a no break space, and that's not the only alternative space you have in, in Unicode. There are tons of them. And uh, only some are matched and considered as white space by the consortium, but there are also a lot of characters which um, 
uh, which are not considered as a white space. So this can lead to, to a lot of problems. Uh, for example, just recently there was a fake WhatsApp on the App Store, and it looked like um, it looked like it was published by the WhatsApp uh, by, by the WhatsApp company, but uh, they put a space at the end, so it just looked like uh, it was pub published by by WhatsApp. And also in the application list where you could uh, maybe see it, they would just use uh, uh, blank strings and this is probably related to uh, like not uh, checking for uh, blank code points correctly. I've put together some more. So in between uh, these, there's the Mongolian vowel separator. This is a, a wider one, it's the EM space. This is the zero width joiner, we will need it later. What's this? Ah, it's the invisible plus. <laughs> On my machine, it's actually invisible. This is uh, the Braille pattern plank, which Braille is uh, like the writing system for blind people, and and uh, it's little dots in 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 the picture of the character, and of, of course you also need a ray to represent no dots, and. <laughs> This is why this one is plank, and also um, this is an example of a character which is not matched as, uh, as a white space character. You have this one, which is uh, the space for Asian characters. And this one is also a space, uh, which is, if I understand correctly, a musical note without a note. It's pretty new, that's why it's uh, still displayed as a, as a tofu. And besides uh, all these white spaces, uh, there's a class of characters called ignorables, which just render nothing, or uh, more, more correctly, they, if your display system doesn't, uh, doesn't know how to uh, display uh, these characters, they j should, should just render nothing. And it's not only a few characters, the whole uh, code point range uh, uh, from E0 to E0FFF is, uh, is uh, considered ignorable. And some examples of uh, characters that you can find there are the so-called variation selectors. Um, th their purpose is to, to, um, to have a visual variation on the preceding character, which is uh, especially useful, for example, in, with uh, Chinese letters where uh, it's not important if, uh, if in the up corner it's two strokes or three, uh, and this variation selector can then tell the display engine to render it correctly. Um, but the character itself, it's totally invisible. Um, more famous is variation selector uh, number 15, uh, which makes some text-based emoji on some platforms turn into image-based ones. And uh, and uh, variation selector 16 is the other way around. But again, it really depends on the operating system. For example, a lot of the uh, a lot of the a lot of the um, smileys are, are always shown on, on for example Mac OS as a as a picture, while on on other systems they they might be always shown as a text-based emoji, and there's no way to change them. It's only a few characters that you can uh, use a variation selector on. And then another ignorable kind of character is a tech character, uh, which was introduced to create uh, language text sequences, but you shouldn't do it. They are just deprecated, so don't create a language text sequence. It's an invisible sequence in your text which, uh, which uh, describes something. So it's the whole of ASCII encoded again, but as different uh, characters. But don't use them. Here we can see them. So what have you learned? There are a lot of invisible characters. It's not all white spaces. Some are matched by the normal regular expression of just backslash x, 
some more are much matched by uh, uh, using the Unicode property syntax to match uh, for white spaces. And you can also match ignorable characters using this, again, rather cumbersome some, uh, uh, code, point, uh, code, po code point property. And some are even uh, matched by anything. Uh, where you can use the characteristics gem again, which has some more support to uh, detecting if if a character is uh, ignorable or blank. Okay, this is my last section. Uh, it's the emoji section, but apparently on this uh, computer, uh, the emoji, uh, the code point sequence that should uh, show uh, a cook, a, a male cook with a light skin tone isn't working correctly. But uh, if it would be working correctly, uh, it could look like this. This is how it looks on Twitter. And yeah, it's constructed out of four code points. I won't go too into detail too much about uh, emoji uh, sequences because it's really, uh, I, I could do a talk about emoji sequences itself. It will it's uh, like seven ways of uh, creating uh, emoji, and uh, um, uh, and the most uh, complicated one is one that uses the zero with joiner, which we we uh, learned about in the previous section. It's uh, it's an invisible character that uh, combines two emoji and. There's this thing with valid versus recommended emoji. So there are a lot of emoji, and theoretically, you can just um, mix any of them. There's this uh, XKCD, which had this uh, fun idea of like combining uh, combining all kinds of emoji. And then uh, Mark Davis, who's, uh, who's from the Unicode Consortium, said, oh, actually, uh, if you are using the zero width joiner, they are all valid uh, emoji. The problem, though, it won't be uh, displayed uh, in, in, in WhatsApp or Facebook or whatever because uh, none of the vendors knows about them. And this is what the emoji standard is about. It uh, recommends some sequences which then the vendors uh, will implement or the other way around. And another type of emoji are uh, country flags. So the, the, the country flex itself, they are rather easy. You just uh, use two re regional indicator symbols, like the flag of Portugal. It's not encoded directly as a single code point. You make it up by uh, using the P and the T uh, regional indicator symbol. However, recently there was also introduced to have sub-regions. And you would guess uh, that they just use the regional indicator letters again, but no. Remember that I said text sequences are de deprecated? Um, they got undeprecated, and now you can use tag characters in some kind of in, uh, in, in another manner to, to, to create sub region flags. So, which leads to uh, a strange behavior. For example, this uh, Twitter user was wondering, uh, like a, a week ago or so, Twitter. Uh, allowed to have like 50 characters in your username, and uh, they wanted to 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 use uh, use it with uh, like Welsh flags, but could only paste in like three. So what's what was the problem? Yeah, it's really complicated to construct such a such a sub region flag. It's uh, it's a normal emoji for black flag. Then you do your tag sequence with these. Uh, invisible, recently undeprecated tech letters, and then you have to, to cancel tech to, to end the sequence, and there you have uh, your Scotland flag. And this is also the reason why at the end there's a black flag. Probably it just pasted some code points and it was enough to display this black flag, but not enough text. Oh yeah, and uh, to, to work with this in Ruby, you uh, can use another micro gem. It's called um, Unicode uh, Emoji, and it contains 
a regular expression which is like huge and it will match like all types of characters uh, of emoji characters even if they are not uh, um, usable on your platform yet and also contains uh, uh, the list of uh, recommended emoji okay I know this was a lot of content so let's have a short recap we learned about graphemes that a character can uh, uh, that, which is the uh, term for characters and if you want to match for any characters you probably want to use the backslash x syntax and not the dot in regular expressions and uh, with Ruby 2.5 we get uh, oh it's not string each grapheme it's string each grapheme cluster actually then to normalize uh, uh, characters uh, is a thing to, uh, to have only one representation of of, uh, of a character and not multiple it's uh, part of the standard library and called Unicode normalize confusables uh, can be done with uh, with uh, Unicode confusable gem we have case mapping starting with Ruby 2.4 and it's all the only time it works is the Turkic option but there's more to come probably you have the you have control characters that uh, you should know about and uh, a lot of them are not specified in, in any way. Uh, displaying characters on a on a fixed width terminal is complicated. So if you're using uh, RuboCop, then you're probably already using Unicode display width already. So feel free to use it in other software as well. And to detect invalid uh, encoded code points, you can use the valid encoding method um, to just replace them. You can use the scrub method and there are a lot of characters which are allowed to to be part of your data but which are not specified and you can uh, match them with uh, the unassigned syntax and the private use syntax there are a lot of invisible characters like not only white spaces but also ignorable ones which don't even render a space but render just nothing and and they're emoji and emoji are um, uh, difficult to to build up because there are so many ways to 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 uh, represent uh, uh, represent what you want to represent. All right, that's it, and I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs>